So this is going to be another repair video. It's just arrived today. I've just opened the back up, and there's two clips on the back and three clips underneath. Um, they call like a Moody's A3000. I wanted one of these for ages, but relatively cheap off eBay. I just opened it up. So this is going to be a real home. Look at that. I wanted to do one of these for a long time. And I'll show you they have a battery leak problem. This one looks like it's got all the toys. Um, <coughs> there's bits of plastic floating around inside. I think the case has obviously got broken somehow. Um, as these bits fell out when I opened it up. But this is what we're going to have to deal with. See all of that. All of that. All of that. All of that. So, this is a tomorrow problem, but I'm going to figure out how to take it apart. There's bits of keyboard floating around inside it. <coughs> Try and salvage that if I can. Repair it, but it looks like the standoffs are broken off. So, yeah, this is similar to tomorrow. Start making a <coughs> start on the neutralising the acid, repairing the traces, and seeing what's left. Plastic bits of fair inside. I mean, I found that bit. I'll stick back on, hopefully I'll find that bit and that'll be the case pretty much. I found that column. Put all those in a cup for now. And uh, it had an inspection on the 15th of February 93. Can't have been much of an inspection, can it? Didn't wait. The keyboard membrane has got two of these and it just pulls out, but you've got to grab it right close to the board and pull it. As you can see, it's already started corroding on there, so that's going to need a bit of work. And air dust, but let's just show you what it's like in here. I'll give it an air dust this way up just to make sure I don't lose any more plastic bits. Get that out of here, isn't it, eh? Real horrors in here. So the case has taken a bit of beating, missing some of the clips. The front of the case has got a nick out of it there. I've got that right hand bit and not the left hand bit yet. The keyboard's are right. Uh, but obviously I'm going to start neutralising, get this off, start neutralising some of that tonight. The board stands up with some pins which just basically fit onto there like that. Uh, so I'll take that out, get it clean. Tonight I'm just going to neutralise the acid. I'm over it, been over it once with the ice props, going over it with the vinegar, white wine vinegar, or 6% vinegar. I've saved the bomb chips, got them out, <coughs> cleaned them up with a wire brush and a bit of uh, vinegar, and then immediately soaked them in a ice prop bath. Let them dry out. And this is what the ball's looking like now. The trace is not looking too bad under there. The sockets probably need doing. I don't know if the camera's picking up the blue, but they've been just dumped with uh, vinegar, as have all the chips. The dull ones are the ones covered in blue. Still a bit on the keyboard connector there. So that's been going for about five minutes. I'm going to take it off to my spot now. I can't get this chip out. I'm going to leave that until I can get the board out because I'm scared of breaking that <coughs> leg. That's just sort of soaking a little bit into my spot. I'm going to try and get this assembly out here, um, which looks like it's just held in a screw there and a screw there. This one's got the uh, hard drive and this board's not down properly and I don't want to wiggle it because there's nothing on it apart from that and it's bending the board. So what I've done is just put a sharp thing in between these pins. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just using it to gradually apply a bit of pressure evenly and hopefully it'll come out. That's how that was held in. Uh, not the strongest thing in the world. But yeah, don't go wiggling it I guess. The phone ran out of uh, it's card storage, so I've got a little proper camera. So yeah, got the board out. Um, next we're gonna take it's got one screw in the middle, I've just going to loosen it off, take that off. Um, four screws I think holding that one and then the board should come out and oh look and you have a bit of the keyboard so we should be able to reassemble the whole thing let's drive out and just have three screws so I've got to find a screw and the drive just looks like a standard 
PC floppy drive. I to the Amiga, I think you need to take these hex bolts out to get the board out. Screw here, screw here. Take the floppy out, obviously. Speaker cables, did it with both hands. And it looks like I'll be able to test this off the ATX. I will try and get this going, but initially that's handy. 5 volts and 100. Just from my notes, that's how the thing came off. There's no lip on that. Now the speakers just slide out. And obviously they've got to come out to let the board out. I think there's one more screw here somewhere. It's, I don't want to force it. Let's have a look. So I'm struggling with that. The back plate comes out. So the ball just lifts out, got a little button on the side here. So luckily all the broken that all the broken plastic bits were in the case, there aren't any others in there, so we can put that to one side and get on with the other ball. Filth! And uh, I'm gonna get this chip out gently, this chip out, and then clean up some of this uh, get this battery off. And look at that the other side. Couldn't look in that bad condition actually. Traces uh, look to have survived largely. People find this chip's gone, these are probably gone. This might need replacing or taking off and rinsing out. I might just take it off and rinse it out in isoprop and vinegar. That probably needs replacing. This oscillator looks completely screwed. Um, that one might be a bit moody. I'm going to re socket all of these. I haven't gone that far very way. Way? I haven't gone that way very far. I haven't gone that way very far. So hopefully it should be alright. Shit was an absolute nightmare. I didn't want to come out. I think someone spilled coffee on this or something, but look at that socket. Really didn't want to come out. So uh, I'll clean that up, sand it down, lose the socket. And traces are starting to go there. That's probably going to be the worst of it. I hope the chips are right. Quite bad. I hope it's alright. So gentle cotton bob, vinegar, wire brush on the pins. Now let's have a little bath in some isoprop. Okay, so I'm ready to start on cleaning it up, it's not great. You can see where it's gold, that's where it's all gone. It should be that colour. But I'll be amazed if it works. It's all inside as well. That's what the socket looked like. So I'm glad it didn't break off or anything, but anyway, the rest of the damage now for one night. That's okay, so one of the worst chip this one with the soldering gun. It came off. I don't think I lifted any traces, but let's clean it up. Okay, so do I have a replacement socket ready? I don't want to turn it on yet because I don't think you can see that that started to go there. So we soak that with a bit more vinegar. Here up with some ice across in about five minutes. I think it's all what they're like underneath. So that's uh, all the components off the board that I wanted to get off. There's a couple of surface mount capacitors here and a couple of zero ohm resistors there. But that's basically the whole area I want to clean up. Obviously I want to change this guy. Um, so all these little vias I've got to clean up because they go through. You can see there's a couple of traces broken up here. So it's happened there, there's a couple of dodgy lines. So first thing, clean it all up, check the traces, repair the traces where necessary, and start putting some sockets on, getting all the gear back on. I don't know if it's showing up, but <clears throat> there are all the traces repaired. Quite a few down there. Quite a few down here. And it's repaired with solder. Down here, scratch the board a bit, but there, one there, you down here, few up here, that's kind of a little bit wider, few up here, all the way up to here, that had rotted up there, so yeah, there's some continuity. And uh, make sure it's all in, and then one socket at a time goes back on. New crystal on, do the power up. 
cut the sockets on, you can see where I've patched them up underneath. Um, and I'm just testing the continuity as I put each socket on. Okay, so that's all the sockets back on, um, and the uh, mouse port back on, and the keyboard thing back on. Just a couple of caps and a few links to put back on. So I've just got to check the continuity around this area. The rest of it looks okay. Wait for a couple of chips, the clock chip I've got fee by. A uh, couple of these chips I've got from Farnell. That one I've got off eBay, I'll try the old one, but I'll try the new one first. Clean up the ROMs, that hopefully should work. Just a cut the trace to patch up this one, right next to the battery, so I put a bit of wire through it and just come to the other side and then snip it off. And then the same thing was uh, here. Not a tiny bit of wire. And then I think we should be good. Just put okay, so all reassembled, all socketed. All cleaned up. All the links are back on. The only suspects are going to be this little capacitor here, C16, which didn't read on my little gizmo. But then neither did the replacement, so uh, just give it a chance. And this. That's the C4, which didn't read on the gizmo. We place the diode here, just for jolly. We place the crystal. Just waiting on another 74LS145, 145N there. I've got the old one, but I'm not going to bother putting it in. I've got the old chip there, but it is pretty badly corroded, as you can see. I found on eBay, same thing for about three quid. So I'm just going to wait for that to arrive. See the corrosion on them pins. I can put it in, I suppose, but I might as well clean it up and put it in for now. But probably not going to stick with it. And then just the clock pin, or the clock chip, which is also was a bit of a mess, which I'll clean up for now and put back in there. And then it's all reassembled and ready to test.